The U.S. Air Force's venerable A-10 Thunderbolt II has received a new wing at davis Monthan Air Force Base, Arizona. The Air Force said in a release that A-10 assigned to the 357th Fighter Generation Squadron received a new set of wings. This A-10 was the third airframe to undergo a wing swap at home station instead of the 309th Aircraft Maintenance Group at Hill AFB, Utah. Due to the extensive in-depth work required to complete a wing swap, Skilled professionals from the 309th AMXG Expeditionary Depot Maintenance Squadron forward deployed to DM for this major component maintenance. Normally, a fighter squadron would send the jets to a depot at Hill AFB and we would do the whole process there, Tech said. Sergeant Lee Lopez, member of the 309th AMXG Expedition Depot Fuel Systems Team. Due to global health issues causing delays in our backlogs, there were fewer available slots so the leadership decided it would be more efficient to complete this wing swap at the station. Depot teams are composed of more experienced individuals in specific job classifications for completing extensive maintenance such as a wing change. Depot teams consist of multiple different specialties like crew chiefs, electrical and environmental, and avionics who are a little bit more trained on these tasks. Sergeant Terence Bailey, 355th Maintenance Group A-10 Thunderbolt II Flightline Expediter. Each aircraft assembly has a set number of hours the wings can fly before they need to be refurbished or condemned and we are responsible for tracking when the jet has exhausted those hours. Every time a jet takes off and lands, we log the exact time in the sky, the time it took off, and everything before and after. Once the wings are replaced, the A-10 obtains an additional 2,500 flight hours before the next replacement is needed. The purpose of the wing swap is to extend the life of the A-10 and ultimately uphold the valuable mission it contributes to the Air Force, said Bailey. Every time a jet is down it has a huge impact on flying hours, especially with the 357th Fighter Squadron being the only unit that trains A-10 pilots. Getting these wings is an integral part in making sure that the student pilots continue training, the instructor pilots stay up on their training, and ensuring the mission at DM is getting done. Completing the wing swap at DM expedited the replacement process and added approximately 7.3 thousand hours back into the flying program, placing three jets back into the working system of completing missions, sorties and countless training requirements. One of the wing sets will get sent back to the depot for reuse. Once it is rebuilt at Depot, we will send it to 309th Aerospace Maintenance and Regeneration Group to receive functional checks and approval to replace an old set on another A-10. Since the 309th AMXG Expeditionary Depot team ensured systematic and efficient wing swap procedures were completed, the 357th FGS obtained new and improved fighter jets ready to accomplish their mission. In addition, another set of wings will eventually be put back into the system, saving the Air Force nearly $12 million and equipping another close air support weapon for the next fight. The A-10 Thunderbolt II is a single-seat, twin-turbofan, straight-wing, subsonic attack aircraft developed by Fairchild Republic for the United States Air Force, USAF. In service since 1976, it is named for the Republic P-47 Thunderbolt, a World War II-era fighter bomber effective at attacking ground targets, but commonly referred to as the Warthog. The A-10 was designed to provide close air support CAS, to friendly ground troops by attacking armored vehicles, tanks, and other enemy ground forces. It is the only production-built aircraft designed solely for CAS to have served with the U.S. Air Force. Its secondary mission is to direct other aircraft in attacks on ground targets, a role called Forward Air Controller Airborne. Aircraft used primarily in this role are designated OA-10. The A-10 was intended to improve on the performance and firepower of the Douglas A-1 Skyraider. Its airframe was designed for durability, with measures such as 1,200 pounds, 540 kilograms, of titanium armor to protect the cockpit and aircraft systems, enabling it to absorb damage and continue flying. Its ability to take off and land from relatively short runways permits operation from airstrips close to the front lines, and its simple design enables maintenance with minimal facilities. 
The A10A single-seat variant was the only version produced, though one pre-production airframe was modified into the Ya10B twin-seat prototype to test an all-weather night-capable version. In 2005, a program was started to upgrade the remaining A10A aircraft to the A10C configuration, with modern avionics for use with precision weaponry. The U.S. Air Force had stated the Lockheed Martin F-35 Lightning II would replace the A-10 as it entered service, but this remains highly contentious within the USAF and in political circles. With a variety of upgrades and wing replacements, the A-10 service life can be extended to 2040, the service has no planned retirement date as of June 2017. The A-10 has received many upgrades since entering service. In 1978, the A-10 received the Pave Penny Laser Receiver Pod, which receives reflected laser radiation from laser designators to allow the aircraft to deliver laser-guided munitions. The Pave Penny Pod is carried on a pylon mounted below the right side of the cockpit and has a clear view of the ground. In 1980, the A-10 began receiving an inertial navigation system. In the early 1990s, the A-10 began to receive the Low Altitude Safety and Targeting Enhancement last day upgrade which provided computerized weapon aiming equipment, an autopilot, and a ground collision warning system. In 1999, aircraft began receiving global positioning system navigation systems and a multi-function display. The last day system was upgraded with an integrated flight and fire control computer, IFFCC. Proposed further upgrades included integrated combat search and rescue locator systems and improved early warning and anti-jam self-protection systems, and the Air Force recognized that the A-10's engine power was suboptimal and had been planning to replace them with more powerful engines since at least 2001 at an estimated cost of $2 billion. In 1987, Grumman Aerospace took over support for the A-10 program. In 1993, Grumman updated the Damage Tolerance Assessment and Force Structural Maintenance Plan and Damage Threat Assessment. Over the next few years, problems with wing structure fatigue, first noticed in production years earlier, began to come to the fore. The process of implementing the maintenance plan was greatly delayed by the Base Realignment and Closure Commission BRAC, which led to 80% of the original workforce being let go. During inspections in 1995 and 1996, cracks at the WS-23 location were found on many aircraft, most of them in line with updated predictions from 1993. However, two of these were classified as near critical size, well beyond predictions. In August 1998, Grumman produced a new plan to address these issues and increase lifespan to 16,000 hours. This resulted in the Hog Up program, which commenced in 1999. Over time, additional aspects were added to Hog Up, including new fuel bladders, changes to the flight control system, and inspections of the engine nacellas. In 2001, the cracks were reclassified as critical, which meant they were considered repairs and not upgrades, which allowed bypassing normal acquisition channels for more rapid implementation. An independent review of the HOG UP program at this point concluded that the data on which the wing upgrade relied could no longer be trusted. This independent review was presented in September 2003. Shortly thereafter, Fatigue testing on a test wing failed prematurely and also mounting problems with wings failing in service inspections at an increasing rate became apparent. The Air Force estimated that they would run out of wings by 2011. Of the plans explored, replacing the wings with new ones was the least expensive, with an initial cost of $741 million, and a total cost of $1.72 billion over the life of the program. In 2005, a business case was developed with three options to extend the life of the fleet. The first two options involved expanding the Service Life Extension Program SLEP, at a cost of $4.6 billion and $3.16 billion, respectively. The third option, worth $1.72 billion, was to build 242 new wings and avoid the cost of expanding the SLEP. In 2006, option 3 was chosen and Boeing won the contract. The base contract is for 117 wings with options for 125 additional wings. In 2013, the Air Force exercised a portion of the option to add 56 wings, putting 173 wings on order with options remaining for 69 additional wings. In November 2011, two A-10s flew with the new wings fitted. 
The new wings improved mission readiness, decreased maintenance costs, and allowed the A-10 to be operated up to 2035 if necessary. The re-winging effort was organized under the Thick Skin Urgent Spares Kitting Tusk, program. In 2014, as part of plans to retire the A-10, the USAF considered halting the wing replacement program to save an additional $500 million, however, by May 2015 the re-winging program was too far into the contract to be financially efficient to cancel. Boeing stated in February 2016 that the A-10 fleet with the new Tusk wings could operate to 2040.